Church, good morning. Today is a good day. Amen. It's just a blessing to be in the house of the Lord. And what is usual in the Amy Church is that when our pastors have been appointed or reappointment, we normally make that announcement. So I would like to make the announcement for whom our pastor is for the coming year. Under the protection of Almighty God, Certificate of Pastoral Appointment. Study to show thyself a workman approved unto God, the African Methodist Episcopal Church. This is to certify that the Reverend Dalen K. Greer Sr. is appointed to the pastoral charge of Bethel Bloomfield. The said charge, amen. <laughs> amen. The said charge being under the jurisdiction of the New England Annual Conference of the African Methodist Episcopal Church, given under my hand and denominational seal at the Episcopal Room this 15th day of April in the year of our Lord 2023. This has been signed on behalf of the Annual Conference by our Bishop Julius H. McAllister Sr. I'm going to ask that we all stand and welcome our pastor back. Amen. To God be the glory. Great things he has done. We praise God for another conference year. Hallelujah. Going into year number 11. Hallelujah. Uh, come on, praise team. Let's bless the Lord. Praise him. Praise him. Jesus, blessed Savior, he is worthy to be praised. doxology and the call to worship, followed by our opening selection with the praise team and the congregation. Amen. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. <laughs>
have our call to worship. I was glad when they said to me, let us go in the house. Let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet have been standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. For there your course is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tent of wickedness. For the sake of the house of the Lord, our God, I will seek your good. They are planted in the house of the Lord. They flourish in the courts of our God. O oh Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. For the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my rock and my redeemer. O oh, oh, sing unto the Lord, Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. I will sing of loyalty and of justice to you, O oh Lord, I will sing. Team right now, it's so. <laughs> Sister Janiah, prayer response by the praise team, then followed by the scripture reading by Sister Juliana. Amen. Good morning. 
May we all bow our heads. Father in heaven, we thank you for the amazing, beautiful world you created. Help us to care for it. We thank you for the wonderful, unique people you have made us to be. Help us to care for one another. We thank you for the incredible, tasty foods you have invented. Help us remember and care for those who are hungry. We thank you for the inspiring stories and teaching in the Bible. Help us to share this good news with people everywhere. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Sister Juliana. Good morning. Um, the scripture today can be found in John chapter 20, verses 21, I'm sorry, 19 to 23. John chapter 20 verses 19 to 23. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the glory, Patrick. be the glory great things he has done and continues to do 
uh, certainly to our worship leader, Brother Dragos, who is leading us this morning with power. Isn't he doing a wonderful job? Amen. Oh, you could do better than that. And for these young people who are leading us in worship, the Spirit of the Lord is in this house, and certainly we praise God for our young people. They are not the church of tomorrow, but the church of today. And they continue to lead us and bless us and guide us abundantly in the name of Jesus. Amen. It is so good to be back home. Amen. Uh, we had a long annual conference. Amen. Uh, the Lord blessed us with wonderful weather, uh, but it was hot in that, that church. Amen. It was hot. And so uh, we praise God for Bethel Church in Bloomfield. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so it was a blessing to uh, be selected to preach the annual sermon. And thank you, Bethel, for coming out in such wonderful numbers and filling the house of Charles Street Church and uh, just being there to represent this church and to support your pastor. Uh, we love you so very much. Thank you from the very bottom of uh, my heart. And certainly uh, to our young people that participated on the YPD program and uh, our, uh, those that participated in the Missionary Annual Day service, uh, Bethel was represented every day at the seat of the annual conference. To our preachers that went and answered the roll call uh, and uh, for all of the work that was done and certainly to our musicians that went and blessed us amen god bless you and this praise team amen amen uh that uh that tore the house up on the opening day amen amen and and so uh, uh i've been getting requests for them to go on the road and i keep telling pastors they cannot go uh uh, so uh, you, you, you all are locked down, but we praise God for you. Uh, on uh, Friday, we were blessed. On Friday, we were blessed uh, to uh, witness a great act. And so uh, let me read the certificate. African Methodist Episcopal Church, under the, the protection of Almighty God, certificate of ordination, itinerant deacon, Having satisfied the Board of Examiners as having duly fulfilled the educational requirements prescribed by the doctrine and discipline of the African Methodist Episcopal Church and passed the test for ordination and being a person of whom the New England Conference judges to be well qualified for the work, I, a bishop, of the African Methodist Episcopal Church by the imposition of my hands and prayer this day have set apart the Reverend Jennifer Little Greer for the office of itinerant deacon. Amen. Amen. Granting her the rights to administer baptism, perform marriages, the burial of the dead, and the Lord's Supper after the elements have been consecrated by an elder, and feed the flock of Christ so long as her spirit and practice are such as one that becomes the gospel of Christ and the discipline of the African Methodist Episcopal Church. In witness that whereof I have hereunto set my hand and denominational seal this 14th day of April in the year of the, our Lord, 2023, Bishop Julius Harrison McAllister Sr., presiding bishop of the First Episcopal District. Congratulations to our First Lady, Reverend Jennifer. Amen, amen, amen. Everybody keeps saying, we don't know what to call you. Amen. So we just say Reverend Jennifer. Amen. Reverend Lady Jennifer. Amen. And so uh, you can say Reverend First Lady Jennifer. Amen. But it's not Sister Jennifer. Amen. Hallelujah. So we praise God for the work of the annual conference. The work is not all divine. Uh, is all divine. We have so many things 
going in the mode of our denomination and in the seal, the direction that we are going. And we'll be sharing uh, much of that later as uh, time unfolds, but we praise God for you. Amen. Uh, we were at Bethel Church in Boston for the last two days of the annual conference. and the first three days, we were at Charles Street Church. And so we were able to uh, have a, a wonderful difference in the hosting and uh, the strengths of those churches as the uh, fabulous five, as they called them, uh, entertained uh, the annual conference. And next year, we already know we are going to Cambridge. We are going to St. Paul AME Church, and uh, uh, they have a group of churches that are hosting together, and uh, uh, they are the Kingdom Ambassadors. And so the Kingdom Ambassadors will be entertaining us at St. Paul Church in Cambridge. And so we have to get ready for that Boston traffic again. Amen and we have to get ready to go. We, we want to pray, pray much for uh, Brother Terrell Green. Uh, he was our alternate delegate, and uh, uh, he got sick at the annual conference. And so he is under the weather today, uh, and so we are lifting him in prayer. Amen. Certainly we continue to pray for Sister Paulette, uh, who was our delegate. And uh, it, it is always a stressful experience uh, when you have to go to the emergency room uh, out of state. But we pray he's home, hallelujah, and uh, is on the mend, amen. He was trying to come to church this morning, but we had to lock him down, tell him he had to rest, amen. So pray much, pray much for uh, Brother Terrell, amen, amen. Uh, we are going to receive our tithes and our offering. And as we are uh, receiving our tithes and offerings, we are getting ready to launch that campaign for our screens. We were in Bethel Church in uh, Boston. And Bethel Boston has the exact screens that we are putting up. They had them all across their church, just like we are going to have. And it was a beautiful sight to behold in reading the words of the songs and seeing things. And they even posted at one time of the service a car with a license plate and said, if this is your car, please see Brother uh, Reverend Robert Gray, we must move your car. You are parked in a handicapped zone. And, and so those are the blessings that we were able to see and witness in operation during the annual conference. And so uh, you will hear a little bit more about that. But today we're going to receive our tithes and our offerings because we can't beat God giving no matter how we try. And so as the table is being brought forward, amen, uh, we will. Um, begin, uh, at, invite you to follow the direction of the ushers as we bring our gifts to the Lord. If you are giving through online giving, through uh, virtually uh, electronic giving, uh, we invite you to follow the app, the GiveLify app, um, and uh, look for Bethel AME Church, Bloomfield, Connecticut. You'll see the picture of the church there. And follow the instructions or PayPal. Again, looking for Bethel AME Church, Bloomfield, Connecticut. Follow the instructions and you can give there. But if you're in the sanctuary and want to give through the plate offering, there are tithing envelopes posted throughout the sanctuary. We invite you to please get an envelope. We have a table. We got one. We have one. Uh, we invite you to um, then uh, give through the uh, put your we invite you to put your name legibly on that and we thank you in advance in the name of Jesus let's pray father in the name of Jesus send a blessing in this offering bless each and every giver abundantly richly we give richly we shall receive for it's in the name of Jesus we pray Amen. Amen. Ushers, won't you come now? You'll straighten these tables out. Amen. And we invite you to follow the direction of the ushers as we bring our gifts to the Lord. Amen.
humbly stand. We give thee but thine own, whate'er the gift may be. All that we have is thine alone, a trust, O Lord, from thee. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, I understand the pastor's aide have a presentation or pastor's aide, pastor's aide? Not yet, not yet. All right, well, we're going to move forward in the service. Amen. And so we are, oh, they're coming now. All right, here comes pastor's aide. Won't you receive them as they come? Sister Deborah and Sister Val are coming in their own way. First Lady, Reverend Jennifer Little Greer. <laughs> On behalf of the Pastor A, we would like to show you how grateful and would like to congratulate you on a job well done. Okay? You are still my queen. Okay? Congratulations, congratulations. Just a token of our appreciation. Bethel family, thank you so much. I am just so humbled that God would allow me to be one of his servants. Thank you for being my Bethel family, and thank you for the flowers. Thank you so much. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Come on, A&J Corral. Let's bless God.
just before the choir comes again, amen. We praise God for so many visitors in the house of the Lord. And so if you're visiting, won't you stand? I just want to acknowledge your presence, amen. Visitors, visitors, amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you. God bless you, sir. Amen. Amen. I also see Sister Carleen. God bless you. Amen. She's not visiting, but I'm glad to see you home. Good morning. Amen. Amen. Sister Carleen visiting from Delaware. Amen. Praise God. Come on, choir. Uh, I'm sorry I had to just stop and pause. I looked over and saw Sister Carleen. I saw a few other visitors that don't want to stand, but that's all right. You're welcome in God's house. Praise God. They said they're done. Amen. Praise the Lord. I guess my spirit was right when I stood up. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord. By the power of grace divine, let my soul look up with a steadfast hope, and my will be lost in thine. Speak to us now, God, we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Certainly we praise God for Sister Farkasin that read our scripture lesson this morning. Let us read again the Gospel of John, the 20th chapter, beginning at the 19th verse. Again, John, the 19th, the 20th chapter, beginning at the 19th verse. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jews and Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. And if you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Amen. 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 For a few minutes, let's focus ourselves on this subject. I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. It has been a crazy day. I mean, look how the day started. Early in the morning, with all of the confusion at the tomb, all of the running back and forth, and now it's evening. The disciples were huddled together just as they had been a few days ago. They now are huddled only uh, with the room filled with fear and confusion. The disciples are trying to figure out what are they going to do now. Somebody asked the question, can it be true? Can it be true among the chaos, among the worry, among the angst, among the fear deep down in their souls? Uh, can it be true that Jesus has risen from the dead? After all, the tomb is empty. And they see the grave clothes folded there. And they said he appeared to the women. So the disciples have gathered themselves in that room and they locked the door. They were afraid. Church, fear will cause us to lock doors. Many of us have locked doors in our minds, doors in our spirit. We lock doors to prevent others from coming in. 
Doors prevent uh, others from getting to us. Doors are a barrier that prevents others from coming into our inner courts, our inner circles. Uh, we all have doors. We have barriers that we do not allow people to cross. We have uh, places in ourselves that we say, no, they can't come uh, that close to us. Uh, we have doors. Many of us have multiple locks on our doors uh, because we are really afraid uh, of exposure. We don't want people to see how we really live. You, you know, some folks that you can't go by their house. Come on, put a smile on your face. You have to call in advance before you go by their home because uh, uh, if you come by, you'll be standing on the other side of the door. They won't allow you entrance into the door. And sometimes you wonder, I'm your girl, I'm your, your guy, I'm your friend, you, I can't come by your house. The reality is uh, some people don't want us to see how they naturally live. You know, they have to clean up before you come. They have to tuck things away. They have to make sure that it's tidy and neat for you when you enter into their home. And so uh, they don't want, they have barriers, locks and doors that are closed uh, to make sure that nobody can enter in unless they allow you entrance in. You better call me before you come to my house because if you come, you will be on the other side. They, they won't allow entrance in. But the other thing about doors are and locks, uh, they are also a barrier to keep things that are in from going out. Another sermon for another time. In the text, we find that the disciples locked the door for fear. They were afraid of the Jewish leaders. They were afraid of the Pharisees and the Sadducees coming in and taking them. They watched Jesus being crucified on that cross, and they were afraid and had fear for their own lives. They were afraid that they themselves would lose their own lives on an old rugged cross. And so they locked the door trying to figure out it all out. The women had come and told them that Jesus had risen from the dead, but they still had their door locked. Here they are, the disciples, the ones that were following Jesus, the ones that witnessed his miracles and witnessed his ministry in the making, yet they still are walking around with the door locked with fear in their heart because they were worried about their physical condition. Um, but glory be to God, church. Um, we serve a God who knows all about us. Uh, he recognizes our fears. Uh, he recognizes our wants. He recognizes our shortcomings. Uh, he recognizes our failures. And he understands us. Um, and look what he does in the text. Uh, in the middle of a locked door, Jesus walks in and shows up in the room and declares peace be unto you. Isn't that a wonderful God? that he can look beyond our faults and meet our needs. He can look beyond our doubts and still give blessings. He looks beyond our limitation and still makes a way out of no way. Here we are with our doors locked and Jesus can bust right into our private places and he declares peace be unto you. Jesus does not point the finger that we didn't make our beds and that our homes were not 
tidy. Jesus does not talk about the laundry basket that's sitting on uh, the floor. He does not talk about the dishes that are left in the sink. Uh, he does not point out that we did not vacuum the floor or that we left the TV on. Uh, he does not give uh, a white glove test uh, on the windowsill. Uh, he does not examine uh, how we keep our home. Uh, but what he does uh, is he walks into our mess uh, and he declares uh, peace be unto you. Uh, a matter of fact, the scripture says uh, that he declares peace uh, not one time, uh, but three times. Uh, don't you understand uh, that is uh, so that even those of us who doubt him uh, the first time, uh, he declares it a second time. Uh, and I'm a witness that he is a God of a second chance, uh, and a third chance, uh, and a fourth chance, uh, and a fifth chance, uh, and a sixth chance. Uh, he declares uh, the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. And the point of resurrection is to understand that in the midst of our grief, there is still hope. And in the midst of our doubt, uh, there is still hope. And in the midst of our fear, there is still hope. And uh, he then breathed on them the Holy Spirit. This is the part of the text that I like. Because I wish I could have stopped on that second point about peace. Point one is locked doors. Point two is he declared peace. And then point three is reception of the Holy Spirit. See, now he does something with our fear. And he transforms us. That's, that's the bishop's theme for the first Episcopal district, just so that you know, transformation. He, he transforms their lives, and he tells them to receive the Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost power. He breathes on them with Holy Ghost power. We are nothing by ourselves, but when you have Holy Ghost power, you have the ability to do great things. There's the text. There's the topic. The Holy Ghost will give us the ability to receive great things, but he also gives us the ability to do great things. Uh, he, Jesus declares to the disciples in that house uh, that once you get the Holy Ghost, uh, then you have to forgive everyone of their sin. Uh, that is not just about you, but it's about you and God. And just as God forgives us for our untidiness, uh, we serve a God that then expects us uh, to look at our neighbor and then give them the love of God uh, that was extended unto us. Uh, we have to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. Uh, we have to hug those who need a hug and encourage them along life's journey. Um, uh, we have folk uh, uh, that may have frustrated us uh, uh, last month or even last year, uh, but we have to throw that into the sea of forgetfulness, uh, and we have to move on uh, and see what the end is going to be. Um, Jesus said, receive uh, the Holy Ghost, uh, and if you forgive anyone's sins, uh, they are forgiven. Uh, and if you do not forgive them, uh, uh, they are not forgiven. Uh, uh, Jesus expects us uh, to be the hands of God, uh, to be a blessing to those who need it, uh, uh, to help somebody who is along the way, uh, to lift the fallen, uh, to cheer those that are forsaken, uh, and to be a blessing uh, uh, to the children, uh, uh, to be a blessing to the widows, uh, to be a blessing to those along life's journey. Uh, 
Uh, we have to know uh, how to say, I love you. Uh, I need you uh, to survive. Uh, so Bethel Church, uh, as we move into the new conference year, uh, I just need you to know uh, with the power of the Holy Ghost, uh, uh, we are expecting great things. Uh, God's going to do great things uh, in this place uh, because we are God's elect children. Uh, God looks beyond our faults uh, and he meets our needs. Uh, and if we serve a God uh, who can look beyond our untidiness, uh, he is a God uh, who can still bless our church uh, and bless our members uh, and bless our seniors uh, and bless our children. Uh, I'm uh, expecting great things. Uh, I'm expecting uh, God to show up uh, and show out. Uh, I'm expecting uh, the sick to be healed. Uh, I'm expecting uh, the lame to walk. Uh, I'm expecting uh, the dumb to talk. Uh, I'm expecting great things. Uh, I'm expecting souls to be saved. Uh, I'm expecting souls to be delivered. Uh, I'm expecting God to make a way. Uh, I'm expecting God to provide. Uh, I'm expecting God to blow your mind. I'm expecting great things in my heart. You do great things in my mind. You do great things all around. You do great things. I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things in Bethel Church, in my house, in my life, in my heart. Great things. Great things. Great things. Great things. Great things. I don't know what you're expecting, but I'm expecting great things. If Jesus could show up in the middle of a locked house and blow their minds, what could Jesus do in our lives when the doors of the church are open? What will he do? Even if you or I try to lock the door and say, you're not going to touch that part of me, Jesus. The text says he'll walk in. Uh-huh. That which you are afraid of, he'll walk in. And he'll blow your mind. That which you said will never happen, he'll walk in and blow your mind. That which you say will never be healed, that part of me, he'll walk in, blow your mind. I'm expecting great things. The doors of the church are open. There might be someone in God's house today who does not know the Lord Jesus Christ, the hallow of your heart. I invite you to come now. Step down. Walk on down and shake my hand. Give God your heart. If you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, won't you come? If you do not know the Lord, if you've never said, Lord Jesus, give my heart to you, I invite you to come right now. Just step on out. Come down. If you don't have a church home, there are folks that need to be a part of a church. We all need to be a part of the church. So I invite you to come. Come now. Join the church. If there's one, if there's one, if there's one, if there's one, if you need a church home, come right now. If you need to be inside the ark of safety, come now. The church is like an umbrella, and it's raining outside. You don't want to hold the umbrella over here, and you're outside of the shelter of the umbrella. You want to stand underneath the umbrella. If you don't have a church home, you're living your life and it's raining, it's pouring. 
you're getting wet because you're holding the umbrella like this. And all God wants you to do is get underneath the shelter of the umbrella. Do you know all you have to do to get under the shelter is make one step. If you start walking, come to this altar and say, I want to be a part of the church. I want to join the church. I want to be under the shelter of the umbrella. And you know what? God does not care about your past. He doesn't even care about your present. Because he'll shift it. Look what he did in the text. He walked into a locked house. They had fear in their hearts. But he declared peace three times in the midst of their fear. He'll do the same for you if you get under the shelter. And so won't you come if there's one, if there's one. As the praise team sings this praise chorus, he has done great things for me. I invite you to come. Come if you want to join the church. Come if you are not saved and you need to be under that shelter of the umbrella. I want you to come right now. The door of the church is open. Is there one? He has done great things. He has done great things for me. Great things. worship brother Dragos God bless you a fantastic job these young people that sang come on give it up for them uh, uh, sister Farkasin that did our scripture our prayer sister Washington God bless you we praise God for these our children amen 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 praise God from whom all blessings flow <laughs>
with the door locked. Jesus walked in on the disciples and with fear in their hearts, chaos in their minds, Jesus declared peace be unto you and receive the Holy Spirit. I'm expecting great things because of the resurrected Lord. And now may God the Father, Jesus Christ his Son, and the power of the Holy Ghost rest, rule, and abide with you. Now henceforth and forevermore. And the church sang, Amen. Have a great week in the Lord. Come on, praise team, take us on home.